Hi guys! I'm so excited for today's video. We are making a whole assortment of delicious treats for a boy baby shower. These are the perfect DIY ideas for a dessert candy table. There's cake pops, marshmallow kebabs, ombre chocolate pretzels, as well as cake shooters and rice krispie treats. And they are all really simple to put together. So be sure to keep on watching! We are going to start with these fun and easy marshmallow kebabs. First, you want to stick a toothpick into the center of your marshmallow and give it a quick dip into some water, making sure to shake the excess off. Then coat the bottom and all around with a generous amount of sanding sugar in the color that you want to use. And look how easy and cool that is! For the best result, I highly recommend using a coarse sanding sugar since it doesn't get as wet from the water and also it has a sweet crunch that you'll love too. And guys, if it's your first time watching, thank you for joining me in the kitchen. I make new recipes every week, so make sure you join the party and click subscribe. Just in case you don't have the coarse sanding sugar on hand, the regular works fine too. I actually used it for the blue, but it can leave a mark on the bottom if you don't remove the excess water. That can be easily avoided by tapping the marshmallow onto some parchment paper, and you'll be in the clear. Now for the fun part, let's put them onto our sticks. These are 8 inch lollipop sticks and my marshmallows have set overnight so they have a chance to firm up before you go ahead and do this. All I did to finish them off was added a blue ribbon for a little bow. These make such a simple yet delicious party favor. Now the next treat we are going to make are these ombre chocolate covered pretzel rods that are super stunning and eye catching. For the technique, you will need three colors of melted chocolate. Here I have a darker blue and a lighter blue that I made by mixing the darker shade with white chocolate and last is plain white chocolate. I placed a little puddle of each color onto the parchment paper and you are going to roll the pretzel through until it is completely covered. After you have a few pretzels done, the chocolate tends to dry up so you can start over with fresh chocolate, but do not let any of this go to waste. Feel free to remelt whatever you have left over that's on the parchment paper. Once they have set, I'm drizzling the medium blue chocolate on with a squeeze bottle using back and forth motions. And while the chocolate is wet, sprinkle on the sanding sugar to match the colors for the different sections. Comment down below if you're feeling the ombre. I really enjoyed switching up the classic pretzel rods with this color combo. Treat number three is going to be the Rice Krispie Treats. You can't ever go wrong with these. Always, always remember to spray your pot with non-stick and going in is one stick of butter. You want to keep this on medium heat to completely melt it and after that's ready, we have two 10 ounce bags of mini marshmallows. My recipe has slightly more butter and marshmallows for an extra gooey and buttery Rice Krispie Treat. I'm stirring the marshmallows and butter together until they are melted and all the chunks are gone. It will resemble what looks like a marshmallow sauce. And you can pour in the Rice Krispies cereal. There are 9 cups total but I'm adding it in half at a time to make the job much easier. When everything is combined, we could press the yummy mixture into a pan. Mine is 13 by 9 and don't forget to spray it before you transfer it in there as well as your hands, non-stick is your best friend for this. Pack it down into an even layer, the size of the pan and this recipe will make a thick and chewy square when you cut them every time. To make them into pops, all you need to do is dip the end of a lollipop stick into a small amount of melted chocolate and shake it off, then insert it into the center of the square. The melted chocolate anchors it in there really nicely and it's very sturdy. 
I dip them halfway into the melted chocolate and it's important to give them a shake 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 because the extra chocolate pulls up on the bottom. And we are all set to decorate. I drizzled them on a diagonal with a baby blue melted chocolate. You can also use a plastic bag and snip off the corner to drizzle, but I have the most control with a squeeze bottle. For some of the treats, I made cute chocolate decorations with this baby bottle mold. With any small mold, I take a toothpick to fill in the areas with the different colors. It works so much better than a brush for small details, and that way you won't mess up. Before filling in the next color, I wait 5 minutes for this to set and go in with the yellow melted chocolate. You don't need a lot as long as it's completely filled in and not too sheer. For the rest of the mold, I filled in the entire back with the white chocolate. That way it looks smooth and seamless with the other layers and finish by popping this in the freezer for 10 minutes. Our baby bottles are done and super cute. I attach them directly on top of the Rice Krispie Treats by brushing a thin layer of melted chocolate on the back and pressing where I want it to go. I purchased this exact mold in a local cake supply store, but I will link a similar one in the description box. My favorite treat out of everything is definitely the cake pops. Usually cake pops and cakesicles are made by smushing up cake with frosting and forming it into a dough. But this method has the fluffy texture of a real cake and they are the easiest cake pops I have ever made. I use the Baby Cakes Cake Pop Maker and this is not sponsored at all. I genuinely wanted to share with you how it is a great worthwhile investment if you like making cake pops. I prepared the Pillsbury cake mix with the directions on the back of the box. From experience, this brand is best for making cake pops. They are moist yet durable. You want to spray the plates with non-stick while the machine is off and simply fill up the wells to the rim with the cake batter. It is perfectly okay if you slightly overfill them. If you don't fill them enough, they deflate and lose their puffy shape. It is best to plug in the machine after filling them, that way they don't over brown and just wait 4 minutes. It's so fast to make 12 for one batch all the same size without having to roll them and after they cool you could trim off the excess scraps. Also, the surfaces are perfectly smooth with cake pop dough. A lot of times it cracks and makes lines when you go to coat them with the chocolate, but these we don't have that problem. The most important thing is to properly insert your sticks for them to be stable. We're doing the same kind of process that we did with the Rice Krispie Treat Pops. Keep in mind, less is definitely more because you don't want the chocolate to run down your stick. And tap for all that extra to come off, then push it into the center as far as it goes without going through the other side. The color that you want to dip them in later on should match the color that's on the stick. So to create these designs, I'm using white and blue chocolate which we basically use for everything today. Allow the chocolate to harden to prevent the cake from falling off the stick when we dip them. And tip the mug while you gently swirl the pop around. I suggest wiggling instead of shaking to get the chocolate off to be safe. And while it's still wet, I top this blue one with a combination of gold and white quartz sanding sugar. It really adds so much to it. My biggest tips are to tip the mug to the side instead of dipping straight so it is easier to remove and doesn't fall into the chocolate. For the next design, I took another blue cake pop and sprinkled on white nonpareils to look like bubbles and once it is dried, I applied a duck sugar decoration with melted chocolate. I also added on edible pearls to look like bigger bubbles with a dot of corn syrup. 
on the white cake pops, I made a drizzle design with the blue chocolate by rotating the stick as I move up and down and maintain the pressure. Last but not least, the last trees are these cake shooters. For this, I baked cupcakes and dyed the batter blue. Also, you need your favorite frosting. This Italian meringue buttercream is the best frosting ever. If you are making box cupcakes, this frosting really takes them to the next level. First, I'm removing the liner from the cupcake and cutting the center with a circle cookie cutter. If you don't want to make cupcakes, you can also do this with cake, but I find it's more convenient with a small cupcake. Next, I'm slicing the cake into three pieces to put inside of these plastic push-up pop containers. Just drop in the cake and pipe a swirl or rosette with the frosting and top with a big swirl. Literally, that was a piece of cake. I hope you enjoyed making all these delicious treats with me and it gave you some baby shower inspiration. It's Christina here. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.